Bum bum. You better not be eating those Oreos while we're recording. That was so loud. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not picking up you crunching on the Oreos. Here, on, toss me an Oreo. We'll do some ASMR. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what ASMR is? No. So, when you have watched as much D&D content as I have, when you have consumed as much Tichi RPG content as I have to the point where medical professionals would probably say that it is an unhealthy amount, you begin to pick up on certain patterns, habits, if you would. See, I've watched so much at this point, I have seen so many campaigns that I have seen, well, Far more campaigns start than you might expect. Every single time that I've started a new live play, I've seen the beginning of the campaign and I've seen the DM introduce it. Begin to introduce the world, introduce the characters. And I've realized that this moment is far more important than most people realize. The introduction to the campaign is the DM's chance to set the stage, the vibe, to make sure that they have set the standard for the very rest of the entire campaign. Well, kind of. I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, but let's be honest, if you don't do a good job ensuring the campaign in session one, you always have session two, and three, and four, and beyond. You do not make or break a campaign in session one. However, I do think that it is an amazing chance to set the stage in a way that you don't really get for the rest of the campaign. And out of all my time watching teacher RPGs, I think there has been one person in particular who has shown the brightest and done the absolute best in this area, and that would be the insane bird man himself, Brennan Lee Mulligan. Oh God, let's switch. Let, let's say I'm name five famous people and I'll name five birds. I'll name a hundred birds. Nobody wants your birds, Brennan. <laughs> See, I've watched so many Dimension 20 campaigns at this point. I've seen him intro so many of them that I've realized there is a lot to learn. And it's a far more important moment that I might have initially realized. So we're going to go over today three different things that Brennan does in order to intro his campaigns that I think are incredibly useful for any DM out there. But I want to make it clear, this is not just for TTRPG live plays. A lot of the times when I give advice based off of these things, people assume that it only applies to live plays, or I'm not taking into account the fact that whoever did this was in a live play. But I understand that. That still doesn't mean there isn't a ton of stuff to learn. And the three things we're gonna try and learn today is one, Brennan's energy, two, the music that is used, and three, the character he chooses to introduce first. As well as a fourth secret thing that we'll get to later, if I remember. A lot of the times I start recording videos, and by the time I actually finish it, I forget to go through the points that I initially set out. So um, we'll see if I can maintain that structure this time. If I don't, you have every bit of permission to go down into the comments and just choose a very specific, very targeted insult towards me. Do you have put, raccoon eyebrows? I do not have raccoon eyebrows. My eyebrows might be backwards, but they are not raccoon eyebrows. <laughs> Let's start with the first thing that I mentioned, Brennan's energy. Every single time that you go through a Dimension 20 campaign, Brennan starts with a massive amount of energy. And I want to make it very clear right off the bat, I don't think that's necessary. I think he brings a ton of incredibly exciting vibes. However, I think that's because he's on a live plate. See, I told you I take that into account. It's his goal to get somebody invested in this series up front. After all, basically their entire campaign and well, all of Dimension 20 is based around the idea of getting people to pay for the dropout service. They drop the first episode on YouTube so people can get excited by it and then want to go pay the subscription service for dropout to watch the rest. Is this a bad thing? No, they're trying to make money for the incredible product that they make. I don't think that's a bad thing. However, the energy he brings, while well, yes, it is meant to entice an audience, I think is still very interesting and worth taking into account. Not all of us can be as charismatic or bombastic as somebody whose job is to be in front of a camera, but I do think that a lot of us can take cues from what he does. Let's take a clip from one of their campaigns, The Unsleeping City, specifically the intro of it, and just see if you can feel the infectious energy that Brennan delivers with a few simple lines. At this point, play the whole New York City and... New York! No, no, at this point he goes, New York City, baby! Like, that's what he does in the actual, uh, actual episode. Cold, crisp, clear skies over the best 
fucking skyline of any city that has ever been or will ever be. It is New York City, baby. You see gusts of freezing air blow past the Chrysler building. Notice the infectious energy that he brings. It makes you excited about New York even if you weren't before. The very fact that the DM seems to be this excited about what's currently happening is an incredible thing to take into account for your own game. You want your players to be excited. If you think about it this way, session one is a moment of untapped energy. All of the players at the table are excited to introduce their characters, they're excited to take a first adventure, they're excited for the game, however, that energy has no outlet. This means that it's building within each of the players. And so as a DM, you have the chance to reach out and exemplify that energy, to absolutely keep it going, rolling far past the point where it originally was, and now everybody is excited for the campaign. And so that's what Brendan does here. This incredible amount of energy that is brought is so helpful for anybody who wants to try and get the players excited. You have to get them to get invested, to buy into what's happening, and the way you do that is to show them that you too are excited for it. Down through streets of honking cabs and just miserable looking pedestrians who crowd into the tunnels of the subways. Pack all of a sudden their winter coats, trapping them in boxes of body odor and heat stuffed together on their morning commute. Now it is easier for Dimension 20 campaigns because of the fact that they are all themed. Brennan can very easily lean into the themes, which we will get into in a little bit here, and so therefore you can get everybody excited. But honestly, that's something every GM should do regardless. Get your players to buy into your world by explaining to them the theme, the vibes. What are your inspirations? What are the expectations? What sort of adventures will they be running? Letting them know these things and then reaffirming them through the introduction that you give to the start of session one is one of the best things you can do. But this then leads into point two. The music. Now, I want to make it clear, Dimension 20 edits in music after production. And I don't think that's a bad thing. They are an entertainment company. They're meant to entertain. That's the purpose of them adding music. And it does add a lot of incredible stakes. You arrive um, at the Clinton Hill Chantry, which is a lovely little brownstone in a very beautiful ivy-covered part of Brooklyn. Um, and uh, you see that the door has this sort of gargoyle. However, there are certain times where it's clear that Brennan has prepared this stuff beforehand and the players get to hear it and it brings this weird amount of unexpected excitement, like the following clip. We're gonna cut over now to the neighborhood of Elm Valley. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Notice the players immediately experiencing the energy that is brought with that music. They know what's going on, they're excited about it, and it brings a very fun transferring of energy from one character to another. I don't think you have to prepare specific tracks for each and every player character's introduction. I want to make that clear. In fact, setting up music in general is a difficult thing to do. However, having the music prepared for that initial intro monologue to set the scene, the stakes, and the excitement is not difficult to do and so effective. Because here's the deal, music does a ton to set the mood for your players subconsciously. So by doing this, you are therefore subconsciously telling them what you're going for, as well as verbally doing so, reaffirming the vibes you're looking for, and making so much happen all in one moment. And I think that is honestly an incredible way to do things that really gets everybody excited. But that then leads into the third thing, and it is what I honestly consider to be one of the most important things to the intros. See, I've never once watched a Dimension 20 campaign where I didn't feel very confident that I knew the vibe, energy, and expectations they were trying to set. I knew what they were wanting. And this is because of one specific thing that Brennan does, and that's the fact that he seems to be very insistent on which player he introduces first. Much like many live plays, whenever they start a new campaign, they introduce each and every player and their characters all one after the other. And this is an interesting thing to do, and I personally do it in my campaigns. However, when I do it, I roll a dice and let the dice determine who's going to get introduced next. However, I realize that there is something that he does which is very intentional. He chooses the character that is one going to be the easiest to introduce the world to, to the audience. Why don't we have this decided by a roll of the dice? That feels oh, fine no. to me. Yeah. 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 
Hi, AIJ here because I did not have the ability to record this part, so I'm making do. Right, so let me address the elephant in the room here. I was wrong. If I had researched a little bit more before recording this, I would have seen that in most cases, Brennan does in fact roll to introduce characters. I'm not sure how I missed this. That being said, I still think this point is one worth considering. The idea of introducing the characters who will have the easiest time slipping into the setting and therefore helping set the tone for the rest of the anxious players can be a great idea. When done in moderation anyways. But yeah, I was wrong about this one and I accept all funny insults thrown my way because I should have noticed this prior. My be y'all sometimes it just be like that. And that specifically is something that I think is a very good thing to do. However, most of us don't have an audience. That being said, I honestly think it is an incredible tool to look at your players and treat them as if they were your audience. It is your job to entertain them and to bring joy to everybody there, also including you. So if you include yourself and the players as part of your audience, then there is something you are trying to perform for to create and I think that's honestly a very good motivational tool. So yes, he does choose whichever player is going to best introduce the audience to the world, such as in, what was that? Wait, I forgot, I totally forgot the name of the campaign. It's the Candyland campaign, um, um, uh, a, a Crown of Candy, such as in A Crown of Candy. Professional YouTuber, everybody, I do this for a living. In A Crown of Candy, he makes sure to introduce the characters who are going to easiest introduce the audience. First of all, it is not something that is so integral that you must know everything about the world. However, it is something enough to make sure that people can sort of get the vibe of what's going on without being overwhelmed. And he does this in most campaigns that he does. Except for, in particular, the uh, the fantasy, well. Fantasy High? No, not Fantasy High. Fantasy High also, no. Proud of you for knowing the name of that, but not Fantasy High. Um, it's the fairy tale one. It's, uh, it's not Neverland. Hold on. I'm having a little bit of a brain fart here. Um, it's actually 9 o'clock at night, so. Yeah, it's, it's been a long day. <laughs> Again, I know I was wrong about this and you have no idea how little sleep I had gotten when this was recorded. I am so sorry, friends. I have literally watched this campaign. I should have known the name. Never After. That's the one. Such as the Never After one. Now don't get me wrong, the introduction for Never After is incredible. And he did choose the player that was going to most effectively introduce the themes of the campaign. However, it did not ease the audience into it. Instead, it was a blind sighting. See, Never After, without giving too many spoilers, and there will be like the slightest amount of spoilers for the first 20 minutes of the campaign. So uh, feel free to skip over this part. I'll put a timestamp right there. However, Never After is a campaign that takes fairy tales and twists them to their darker forms. And he introduces this by introducing the princess who was supposed to be awoken from her nap, much like Sleeping Beauty, by instead having her wake up to realize nobody has come to rescue her and briars have grown down her throat and into her intestines. You can feel that you're holding things, holding them, not with your hands. In a twitch of movement, there's sudden pain and you can feel a sharp tug on the inside of your body. Briars are growing out of your mouth. That does not ease anybody into the world. However, it does clearly introduce it. And what's interesting is you could see the visceral reaction to all of the players and they realize what they're in for, of which Brennan actually goes out of his way to make sure they knew about in the first place. I hope marketing has prepared you for what you're watching right now. What you're watching right now, it's gonna be scary. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> I'm joking, dude. I thought you didn't say there were gonna be thorns, dude. This was really, I, this was my like mini golf intro to scary. I was like, hey, we'll do some like thorn body horror stuff. So whichever character you choose to introduce does a great amount to initially create the energy that everybody should be expecting. Set the expectations for the campaign. But this all leads into the fourth thing, the secret ingredient that I mentioned, which also means that you cannot go into the comment and insult me personally because I remembered to do it. So go ahead and delete that, that paragraph you had written. And if you were going to, if you've already commented it, just um, go reply to your own comment and uh, apologize to me in great detail. Thank you. But the fourth thing that Brendan does is he makes sure that in every single introduction for characters, there is an NPC to provide further context to the world while also providing further context to the character. This 
is an amazing and incredibly difficult tool to do. And I'm actually gonna provide just a few examples right here just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> Darling, you look wonderful. Are, are you winning the fight? <laughs> I don't. Oh, Mama, I, her son is really giving it to me today, but don't worry, I'll best him yet. <laughs> her son, let my boy win. It's a much older woman, uh, it's just deep sort of wrinkle lines in her face, uh, spectacles, these little half moon spectacles, uh, bun of sort of, you know, uh, bright blue hair comes up off of her uh, head. Hanshi, how you doing on coffee? You need anything? Always more, always more coffee. <laughs> All right, I'll go down to the dopamine store. And you see, she, <laughs> uh, uh, and Dr. Lugash Primitsky uh, walks in. Dr. Lugash walks in. You've been working with Dr. Lugash for a while. Uh, your supplier, Seven, recommended him to you. Okay, Peter, how's it going? Oh, that's oh. good, man. Yeah, feeling all right? Your test results do not indicate that this is true. What do you mean? Well, I'm looking here. Um, I guess we'll start with the small stuff. Your vitamin levels are not great. Mm. What have you been eating recently? I found out if you microwave cheese on a plate, you can peel it off and then it's like a crispy, like a crispy cracker. Oh boy. Right. Um, send some of our guys too. Just, you know, just to kind of equal things out. Were... It's fine if she gets kind of the win, but if she obviously a, uh, a true knight of the Sworn Order of North Gumbia wants not for glory. Of course but not. Merely and to, we don't. And we don't. Would be would be great to get a win. <laughs> would, would be wonderful. Would be great to get a win. Yeah. Yes, for sure. So with all those examples, you can clearly see that Brandon provides NPCs one to introduce the character by showing what they're all about. The NPCs always set up the characters to give their most true self. To either set them up to do the amazing things that they usually do, or to show what they are going to go through in a regular day to day life but the characters also provide context to the world this is an excellent narrative technique called telling and showing it is more important to show what's going on rather than tell and you can hear this all the time but doing it in a ttrpg is difficult and this technique i'm going to be honest is very difficult to do because you have to both keep in your mind that this npc is meant to introduce everybody to the world while also introducing everybody to the character and i honestly applaud brendan for being able to do this so frequently and so commonly because it's a very impressive thing to do, and I think it takes a lot of legwork and intentional foreknowledge. But yeah, introducing a campaign is a very crucial part of everything because it sets the expectations moving forward for the players and yourself. It helps garner that excitement and energy, and I honestly think that is an incredible thing to do. So if you want to get more tips like this, or just more TTRPG live play stuff, or just more of me, or what most people have been subscribing for recently, uh, my wife behind the camera, say hi, wife. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> then please feel free to subscribe, go down, comment about whether you like or dislike what I said, if you have a story about anything, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, yeah, all the stupid YouTube stuff. I'm, I'm gonna keep saying it because it's important to do, but I don't like doing it. Anyways, go out into the world and make it true. Bye nerds. Bye nerds.